the last two dresses are finished. Um, I've mostly edited the video for making this skirt as well. So all I need to do now is film these two costumes and photograph them and film me wearing this skirt for the end of the tutorial video. And these are done and they can be picked up ready for the first show this Saturday. So pleased with how they've come out, they look so cool. Oh, let's turn the lights on and show you the lights. So the little battery pack is down inside here. Oh, might be too bright to see them, but there it is, all lit up. Okay, so I'm going to set up for just filming the end of the video now. And we're going to do it outside because these are actually too big to get in the door of the studio. So this is the finished skirt being worn. It's actually, even though it's quite heavy, it's actually really easy to wear because I've put so many points around the waist to hold it. And you, I've done a waistband that you can tie as tightly as you need to. It actually sits really nicely on the hips and it's got that nice sort of swaying movement to it. Feels really nice. It feels. I love a hoop petticoat. I love the way they move. So it's like the ultimate hoop petticoat, I guess. It's got like this little swing to it. Do you know what? I think I want one of my own now. So. That's a wrap, we're done. Everything's photographed, everything's filmed, and ready to be collected. Hey, it's been a fairly quiet week since I finished the Christmas tree costumes on Monday. Um, partly because I've just been completely exhausted, so I've just been trying to rest up as much as possible and recover after, because last week was so huge, I didn't get much sleep at all. Um, I've been at work, and yeah, just been resting, so it's been nice to have a, a quiet couple of days. Um, and now, it's Friday evening, we're going to go to Bunnings and buy some stuff for the garden, some more plants. I want to start making some topiary frames. I'm a little bit obsessed with topiary, so um, with some of the chicken wire off cuts from making the dresses, I actually want to make a topiary um, cone and grow a box hedge. You can see I love box hedge, it's everywhere. Um, and grow some box hedge up through the cone. And I think I'm going to get a half wine barrel to put it in and then put some plants around the edge. Um, yeah, and just add some more colour and some more green to the garden. It's starting to look pretty good out here, so um, I might give you a little garden tour after we've done that this evening. So we are back and we've got our wine barrel, or half wine barrel, which we're ready to plant up. So it's going to stand on these bricks to stop the bottom getting wet and rotting on the ground. And then over here we've got our lovely corner of beautiful pink petunias and we're going to add this lovely pinky red geranium to this corner as well for extra colour. First job, drill some drainage holes in the bottom of the barrel. So the plan is to pop it in the corner here, but we've got to get it exactly where we want it because it's going to be far too heavy to move once it's full of soil. Oh, I love it. That's a really good size there. The end of this patio here has always been a bit nothingy, so something this big there is going to look amazing. Maybe have the joints facing inwards, what do you reckon? Yeah, I like that. Now we've got rocks in the bottom to stop the soil falling through the holes we've just drilled. And then to plant it up, we've got a Japanese box, which I'm going to make the topiary frame for. And then we've got Greek basil, Thai basil, and these pretty little purple bells to go around the edge. So next I need to go find the chicken wire and make my little topiary cone. Okay, 
Okay, so the barrel is all planted up. We've got Thai basil and we've got Greek basil and we've got these gorgeous little purple flowers. And then we've got the Japanese box in the middle, which will eventually come up through my sort of cone-shaped bit of chicken wire there. And I think it's a really good, or well, if I step back, it's a really good proportion with the barrel. And it's going to add some much needed interest to that corner of the patio as well. So I've got my, got my little French style planter there with my other box hedge plant in, which eventually I'll shape into something. I've never tried making a topiary frame before, so we'll see how it goes. So I guess the plan is that it grows up and through and then you just trim it to the shape of the frame as it gets bigger. Next we're putting in another lime tree. So we've got this ugly fence at the back which we just can't afford to do at the minute because it's just huge. So we are gradually planting some fruit trees along here. So we've got a lime that we're putting in today that we just bought. Then a few weeks ago we planted a fig which looks like it's doing really well and there's already some little baby figs on there so I'm very excited about that. We've got an apple tree here which we put in maybe three years ago and this is the first year we've actually got some apples on it so it's actually getting to a decent size now and then about a month or so ago we put another lime in here so we're going to have a nice little row of fruit trees and then in the corner we've got the chicken pen and in front of them we've got peas we've got potatoes we've got lettuces strawberries and um, oh there's all sorts of herbs through there as well there's chives and oregano there's chilies these are spring onions in the corner going crazy we've got cucumbers and zucchini pumpkins yeah pumpkins oh, the, oh there's rosemary and mint in there somewhere as well these are sugar snap peas Kale. That's kale, which is mainly for feeding the chickens. We get a bit kale. occasionally. <laughs> More kale for the chickens. Then we've got tons of tomatoes, which have just come up oh, from seeds in the... No, no, these are tomatoes. So they've just come up from um, seeds in the garden from last year. So the tomatoes, they're starting to go really well. And then we've got yes. tons of pumpkins coming up here. So we've got butternut pump pumpkins and mystery pumpkins that again have just come up from the soil yeah and, uh, and, and then around the bottom of the tree house there's even more pumpkins, pumpkin pumpkins. and then I along here I, I put one behind there oh did then. you oh it'll go crazy they'll come all the way down here then we've got blueberries a lemon and blueberries we only planted the blueberries a couple of months ago as well didn't we yeah. so be a little while till we get some fruit off those yeah. but it's starting to turn into a really nice garden it's really really good so I'd love to extend the veggie patch our dream is to move out to the countryside and just have loads of veggies and fruit trees and orchards and tons of chickens so this is our little suburban compromise at the minute but it's doing really well and we get some good fruit and veggies from it don't we love yeah. love it and tons of eggs we've got more eggs than we can eat at the minute then over this side of the garden we've got the patio so when we bought the house it had the little sort of pergola thing going on there but it used to get really hot and stuffy under there so we extended the patio out and then we've got this awning the electric awning that comes out so it's really great to use when it's hot underneath that shade or we can wheel it in on days like today and just sit in the sun move the sofa out sit in front of the fire it's a uh, it's a really, really great space to use. It's really, it's pretty tranquil out here considering we're in the middle of suburbia, not far from the highway. And, as you can see, and then we've got the hot tub too. So why would I ever need to leave and go out anywhere? Last but not least, we've got this beautiful tree house. It's a little bit wobbly at the minute actually, which is built on, that was a big pine tree that it died. So chopped it half down and my husband built a little tree house up the top of it. But we are you going up? There was a wasp's nest up there, so we haven't been going up there. It's pretty much just a place to hang fairy lights at the minute. Next, I'm going to give this little outdoor lantern a makeover because it's looking really faded. It was the most beautiful, bright turquoise, but it's looking really, yeah, just a bit faded and worse to wear these days. So I've given it a wash. I've washed, there was loads of um, wax on there, which I've washed off. And I've got some silver spray paint, which I'm going to use just to give it a little new lease of life. Then I've got these little battery powered star shaped lights on wire which I'm going to use to light it up instead of using candles. While that was drying I went rummaging in the shed 
and I found three other lanterns in there which I'm going to put fairy lights in to put out on the patio and on the table. So I've got this beautiful tall thin one, which I've got one exactly the same inside, I bought two of them because I loved them so much ages ago, I can't remember where from. I've got this one, which has got tons of melted wax inside which needs a really good wash. But this one oh, gives out the most beautiful shadows through the um, through this mesh. And then I've got this just plain black one. It's not very interesting, but it's still pretty cute. And once it's full of fairy lights, it'll look great. I've finished cleaning up all of my little lanterns and I've filled them with battery operated fairy lights, which I had loads of because I'm a bit obsessed when it comes to fairy lights. So that's that beautiful one that makes the nice shadows. The black one, the tall lantern. This is the one that I spray painted. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Then I've got these little silver wire star lights there. And then these ones, I've been collecting nice bottles for a while. And I've got these fairy lights that I bought on eBay that have got a little sort of bottle popper shape at the top. I've been collecting these. I was originally going to glitter the inside of the bottles, but I just haven't had time. So I figured it was time to bring them out and put the lights on. And they can, oh, that one's been using that one. The batteries run out, I don't think they last very long. I thought I'd bought the solar powered versions, but I hadn't, so <laughs> I might go back on eBay and get some more and get the solar ones. They've got, they come with like a little solar panel on the top of this part, so I think they'll be way better. But I'll use these for now, and I think I'm gonna sort of scatter these around the garden. None of them are outside lights, so I'll have to move them sort of undercover when the weather's bad. But when the weather's good, I can just leave them lighting up little corners of the patio. Uh, Wonderland. It is like Wonderland, isn't it? It's like little little jars of fairies. Not that you should keep fairies in a jar. Right now we've got the fire lit. I've got a gin and tonic. And we're just going to chill out in the garden for a little while. just performed a uh, lip sync to All I Want It For Christmas Is You and now they're posing on the stairs and they're having the skirts put on while they're on the stairs here. It's looking super cool. The lights work really well on the stairs. I was a bit worried that you wouldn't be able to see the lights and the headpieces and on the dresses but because of the low lighting in here it really stands out. Today we decorated the tree and it's all pink and red surprisingly and right on top of the tree we have Hello Kitty is an angel we've got Stitch another Hello Kitty we've got a Cheshire Cat and Gingerbread Man and all sorts of pretty pink and red things. And we've got a ton of fairy lights going on. 
and it's all super pretty so that's it for this week i will see you next week